this entitled dad has a complicated relationship with his son. But things are about to get worse when the vegan dad discovers his son just got a job at a burger restaurant. What this dad says to his son will shock you. Happy birthday, today's your birthday, on with the revamp show. Okay, so I come from a large family, and one of the things we enjoy is getting together to take the kids to the pumpkin patch and then meet up at my big sister's house for stew, carving, and dessert. We've missed doing this this past two years, but that's another story. This happened in, I want to say, about 2012-ish. My family had all met up at one of our local pumpkin patches, and we were standing in line for kettle corn, hot dogs, hot chocolate, and caramel apples. You know, pumpkin patch snacks. Most of us had already finished with finding our pumpkins and decided to grab snacks before getting lost in the corn maze. While we're standing there, we hear this woman, EM, saying things very loudly. You are unbelievable, knock it off, etc. We all just kind of look at each other like, uh-oh, someone's in trouble, but we don't see where it's coming from right away. I then look over and see my best friend, we'll call her Amy, with her daughter, we'll call her Heather, 10 years at the time in tow, kind of rushing towards us with this crazy look of WTF on her face. I notice she doesn't have their pumpkins yet. Ah, oh, couldn't find any good ones? No, we stopped looking because it was getting crazy over there. Huh? What do you mean? Heather, looking at Amy, says softly, Mum, can we maybe get some pumpkins later? You know, after they leave? They was whispered even more, followed by her giving a quick glance back to the area they just left. Amy to daughter. Sure, sweetie. Then she looks at me and says in a hushed tone, there's some lady over there yelling at some girl. I think it's her daughter, but the girl is just crying and she wants some other pumpkin her dad got. Amy then tried to tell me that this little girl can't be more than five years old and she just keeps saying, no, I want daddy's pumpkin to the EM, but EM is not having it. Apparently the child was firm and kind of soft-spoken at first, and the mum seemed like she was trying to hush the situation. But when the girl wouldn't give in, EM lost it and started yelling things like, Knock it off! Just quit already! Both Amy and Heather were standing fairly close to them, and when EM lost it, it made Heather jump and rush to Amy for protection. Amy told Heather, let's go find OP and see if she wants to help us pick one out. Heather agreed and they rushed over to me. I looked down at Heather and asked if she wanted to do the corn maze first and then we could get her a pumpkin. She was happy about that. Then I asked if she wanted a hot chocolate and started asking if she wanted to go stand with my mum and my little brothers so she didn't get bored standing in line. When we heard EM start yelling again, this time she was marching past us dragging her little one by the arm. No, not literally dragging. We would have stepped in if we saw that. So she's pulling her daughter out of the pumpkin patch and heading towards the exit and parking lot. All the while she's making these loud grunting exasperation noises. And my whole family is watching on trying to figure out what's happening. To be honest, everyone at the patch within earshot of this woman was watching. Then it happens. She pauses slightly in her grunting rampage towards the exit, long enough to look at this five-year-old child and says, You ruin every family outing! And then continues toward the exit. We all just look at each other in shock. And then something else, perfect timing, happens. My son, 12 years old at the time, wasn't looking where he was going because he was distracted by the EM as well, tripped slightly on a hay bale and dropped his hot chocolate on the ground. I looked at him with a huge smile on my face, yell in the most obnoxious EM voice I can muster, you ruin every family outing. All I could hear was laughter. I looked over at EM and she was frozen in place for a minute before turning red and running out to the parking lot. No one clapped, it was just funny to those who witnessed her behavior. And yes, my son laughed too. He knew I was not serious. So now it's a family tradition to use this phrase anytime our family is together and something happens. My sister burnt the stew one year. I forgot a Christmas gift at home once. My son tripped and knocked a gaming sister over, turning it off. Pretty much anything going wrong anytime gets this phrase. It never gets old. Kids are going to be kids. They're not going to get everything 100% right. It's your job as an adult to be mature and have this expectation, which means you need to show more tolerance when they make mistakes. A child is only going to ruin every family outing if you let them ruin it. 
Perhaps what you could do instead is actually try to listen to what it is they need. In this case, it sounded like it was as simple as she wanted her father's pumpkin. That doesn't sound too complicated. But because you're not willing to sacrifice something for your child, then apparently that means they ruin everything. This happened a couple of weeks ago, so it's pretty fresh on my mind. I work for a pretty popular steakhouse and have worked there for about seven months. I rather enjoy my job and the family atmosphere between the employees and managers. On this particular Sunday night, I was running board. Basically, I tell the seaters where to take the guests and the busboys which tables need cleaning. It was about six o'clock and I'm paging parties to come inside, trying to get off the wait so I can send some of the other employees home. It had been a long day for everybody there. I come to a party of six and don't think much of it at the time. I was just seating other parties as they came in. Eventually, these four people came in and say they were ready to be seated. I asked them their names and it was the party of six. I asked them if their whole party was there and they said no. Unfortunately, due to company policy, I can't seat them until they are complete. I start to explain this to them and then ask how far out was the rest of their party. Karen said they were just a little ways out and it was her daughter's birthday. I asked if they knew how much of a little ways out it is and she said about an hour and a half. I was blown away and said, unfortunately, I can't seat an incomplete party. But friend one cuts me off and says, can't you just give us a table for six and let us order and then they can order when they get here. I was blessed with more than enough brain cells to know not to rub my on a cheese grater and to see the messed up logic here. I said, unfortunately, I can't do that. And they cut me off again. And friend two said, why not? I said, because we are on a wait and it wouldn't be fair to the server of the other people on the wait. At this friend three rolls her eyes and laughs. I ask them to go outside and they say no. They proceed to tell me it is too hot outside. For those wondering, it was about 80 degrees Fahrenheit outside. I tell them, unfortunately, you can't wait inside. Please head to your car. They eventually go outside and wait, complaining the entire way, except the daughter who was nice about it. They come inside 45 minutes later, saying they can be seated now. I ask if they are all here and she says no. Again, now ladies and gents of Reddit, I consider myself to be a good and patient person, but my patience was fast dwindling by this point. The only reason I haven't lost my cool was because of the daughter. She had this look in her eyes that said, I'm so sorry for how they're acting. Plus it was her birthday. I repeat what I said earlier and tried to send them outside again, but they wouldn't do it. Mega Karen said they were going to wait right in front of the host stand until they were seated. I lose it and go get my front of house manager. He tells them sit outside or leave. So they stand in the cramped entrance and are being a nuisance and a risk to the other customers. This happened post virus. When I ask them to please put on masks and head outside, they say I can't make them do that. As we had a mandate in my county at the time, I said you can do what I ask or I can call the police. Daughter was the only one wearing a mask. They put on masks and finally go outside. They come back in 30 minutes later and they are all there after a quick head count and we take them to be seated. They complain about the seater. They complain about the server. They complain about the food and left a one star review. The busboy that cleaned the table came up to the host stand and showed us the note that the daughter left us. She apologized for the behavior of her mother and her mother's friends and left a $100 tip for the server. She single-handedly restored my faith in humanity. You know, if I was going out to dinner with a group of people and there were some people there that were one and a half hours late, I wouldn't be upset at the restaurant. It's not their fault. I would be upset at the people who are late. I don't even know how someone can be that late. Are they traveling from like two hours away? If that was the case, then surely they could have warned them a long time ago, hey, we haven't left yet, we're going to be late. Do you know what I think would have made more sense? When they knew they were going to be an hour and a half late, they should have started driving in the same direction they were coming from, met them somewhere in the middle 45 minutes later, and then everyone can have dinner that much sooner. You'd still need to call ahead to make sure they had a free table, but in 45 minutes, there's some restaurant that's gonna take you. As I'm sure you all probably know, my stepmom is vegan, and so is my dad. At least that's what he says, though I've been told he snuck non-vegan meatballs into their dinner once, which is another story altogether. 
They live in southern Ontario, practically able to look out their window and see Michigan in the distance. And we live in northern Ontario, practically able to look out our window and see trees and cottages. I saw a fox one time though. That was really the highlight. My point is, we live about five hours apart, so we haven't seen them in about a year until the last 10 days of August. Normally when we have school, my parents' separation agreement states that they get us every other weekend. But with our move, we didn't see the point of driving five hours to the other side of the province just to stay there for a day and come back up. But when we're not in school for Christmas, March or summer break, they get us for 10 days. 10 days per month in the summer. We were supposed to go there for March break, but he managed to use the cough cough as an excuse to not take us, but said that he'd see about the summer. My 18th birthday was in April, and once I turned 18, he could just refuse to let me come down there and just take my brother, who he's been trying to manipulate for years. I've been going there with them ever since the split to make sure he's all right. I'm not going because I want to. Also in the time between March break and August, I got a job at a certain fast food restaurant. I won't say which exactly, but I will say that they have some darn good burgers and the already delicious fries taste even better when you have a 50% discount. Even though we haven't gone to see them in a long time, my dad still calls my brother every night and I'm usually in the room with him while he talks to him. Usually, my dad doesn't know I'm in the room unless I make myself known which only happens whenever he starts talking about me and I'm not in the mood to keep quiet. Recently, he was talking about how one of the neighbors is teaching him how to ride his bike, which I was never taught how to do. Thanks, dad. He said something along the lines of, you can do at 13 what your brother can't do at 18. To which I replied, I can drive a car, frick stick. Yes, I know frick stick isn't the best insult, but I just finished playing GTA at the time and I still had the annoying echo of Xbox children screeching. But thanks to my job, I'm saving up for a PC so I can hear the annoying echo of PC children screeching. Now then, let's go back to about two weeks ago. My brother was on the phone and I was in the background looking at, I mean, setting up for my next year of school. The topic of my new job comes up and I hear my dad yell, No freaking way, is he coming into our house then? It's at this point that I chime in, more amused than angry. And the conversation went like this. Me putting on the most flamboyant voice ever. Why not? I'm not going to have you sneaking burgers into my house when you know we're V-E-G-A-N. Why would I do that? I've done it before. You know darn well why. Don't play stupid with me. As long as you work there, I'm not letting you in my house. As if he was going to in the first place. Tell you what, I'll make you a deal. You let me bring a few burgers in, and I'll bring you some fries. Brother, call me back when this f isn't around. He hung up, I pretended to be offended, and we both laughed at him. This isn't the first time my dad has used homophobic slurs against me. It sure as heck won't be the last, but I always feel a little tingle of pride whenever I push him to the level of anger. Some call it sociopathy. I call it satisfaction. Was I being a bit of a smart aleck? Maybe, probably, definitely. But it's sort of my go-to attitude when dealing with people I don't like. My brother went alone for the 10 days in August and came back recently talking about how much my dad talked crap about me, saying a job at a fast food restaurant was all I'd ever amount to, etc. I'm hoping to study social work once this whole cough cough thing is over, but who knows, maybe I'll be the next CEO. I'm certainly tempted to drive all the way down there in my uniform and eat a burger on their front lawn. Now, I'm not saying you should go out and intentionally shame a vegan, but I can't imagine a parent rejecting their children because they eat meat. Now, if you're vegan, that's fine that that's your choice, but it doesn't make you a morally better person than anyone else. But you know what makes you a bad person? Rejecting your child because they do eat meat. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. All right, Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.